four points to introduce um, financial literacy to your kids without giving them allowances attached to um, chores. Here we go. Number one, first, teaching children that money is something that is earned um, is very important in our house, okay? I have been an entrepreneur for 19 years. My husband has been working for years on years um, and has degrees to help his career. Uh, both of us make money. Both of us earn money. Um, what we've done though with our children is teach them that earning money is a part of life. It is not something that um, is handed to you. Money isn't handed to you. You know, there's some things that you need to do in order to get it. And the way we've detached uh, money from chores, and in our house it's not called chores, it's called stewardship, um, is just simply that. We've called what we all do in our home as stewardship. And the Bible gives us clarity about what stewardship is. And it's pretty much taking care of what God has blessed you with. When we are talking about money, um, our stewardship doesn't come into play because as all parents know, we don't get paid to clean the house. Uh, there's no one paying us to feed the children. There is not one person paying us to do the laundry. And so we reiterate that with our kids, especially in today's society, knowing that there are lots of families, which is nothing wrong. We're not, not I'm not knocking allowances for chores, but in today's society, it's very uh, counter, um, countercultural from what other children are doing. So we often have, often have to re reiterate with our kids that um, you don't get paid for participating in stewardship being able to actually take care of what God has given you. So for instance, um, a typical week in our house, a child may run out of underwear and typically in other households, um, it will be, okay, get all your clothes together and um, go ahead and do your laundry. And there'll be a laundry chart that says, you know, wash your clothes and it'll be a certain check part or whatever like that. But in reality, when your clothes, when you run out of certain items of clothes, you wash them. The incentive is having the clean clothes. So instead of me telling my boys that they are getting paid for washing something that's theirs, I reiterate that it's theirs. It's not mine. Um, I also don't wash their clothes, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but reiterating what stewardship is is one of the wonderful ways of helping children take ownership of what god has blessed them with number two and i wrote some of them down right here um the al only allowance we have in our home is being allowed to do things or go places okay and we know lots of people do um you do this and um, the only allowance you're gonna get is you allowed to be in this family. No, God put you in this family for a reason, so we're not gonna make it seem as if we can put you out the family for not doing the dishes. That's not God. To me, that don't feel, that doesn't feel loving, okay? But what we do allow our children to understand is that allowance means making room for or giving space or, um, giving more privilege in certain areas. So re again, reiterating that these, this is what allowance is. Allowance is not, uh, and it's for real, by definition, is not an incentive for something that you should do on your own. Okay, so we don't believe it teaches the correct moral standpoint. So. That's why we give allowance as in, okay, you are allowed to have these friends over. You are allowed to go skating, okay? You are allowed to do this or whatever that may be. So um, changing the narrative of what allowance is, is one amazing way of doing, uh, of teaching your children financial literacy. Number three, 
All right, this is one of my most prized ones. It is making and spending money is a way of life. Okay, it is a way of life. So all of us, especially those who homeschool our kids, what we all believe in is giving our children the necessary foundation so that when they leave our home, that they are well equipped to survive and, and thrive also in the real world on their own. What happens with allowance sometimes is that, and I know this for a fact because me and my husband were paid allowances as children and um, are extremely unmotivated at times to do basic stewardship in our homes. But if you were to look, come to my house, go in my room, you'll see us how it struggles to get our room clean sometime. But if you look at our kids, you'll see how much they have a clear, you know, almost first thought process of making sure their room is clean. Before school, they make sure that school room is clean. There's not that much primping and priming and persuading, let's say, to get them to clean something that belongs to them. But us, on the other hand, who was raised with this type of mindset, it's very hard to reverse because you're looking for an incentive. And though now we understand the incentive is, you know, no pest and feeling satisfied and, you know, better health. Of course, when your house is clean and, you know, not sparkling, because I don't think our house has ever been sparkling, but if it's clean and tidy and all these different things, those things came later. And they're still growing in us, my husband and I. But our children though, it's almost like first nature. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that they understand that real life, like English and um, things that they need to know, spelling, all those, those are the things that prepare them for the real world. But also earning and spending money prepares them for the real world. So making sure that they have a way of earning money is important okay four number four is teaching children and equipping them with the necessary tools to know that they can earn money on their own now there's a thing that we do every year every summer we give our children a $100 investment proposal every single summer one child or both of our older children the only reason why I'm saying I'm gonna be having four clearly but right now I have three, two, seven, and 10. For right now, it's only been that 17 year old that been able to, you know, take advantage of that because our two year old, you know, he's a toddler. This is what children need to know in order to thrive in the real world, is that if you want to create wealth, you have to have a plan. The Bible says we are to write a vision and make it plain. And of course, it could have been something that I could say, oh, he wants, you know, little Johnny wants to, have a lemonade stand and then I go out and I buy lemons and I buy the sugar and I buy the cups and all these different things but still Johnny only learned right there how to get money he didn't learn how to plan to get money so when I say helping our kids know that um, money is having money is something that you earn planning is a part of that earning being able to plan things out the way how you desire to make money because the Bible gives us a clarity that a person that does not have a vision will fail. It, it will perish. So I always let my kids understand that, okay, once you go ahead and say, I accept this proposal, you do the plan. It's not my job to do the plan, not my job. I can outline it and everything, but just like our children can research on YouTube how to learn sp special game tricks for their game, they can do the same with learning how to earn money. And matter of fact, my oldest son learned, uh, learned how to do the job that he has, and I'll post a picture real quick. Learn how to do a job that he has, that he created, um, from watching YouTube channels. And so, at the end of the day, 
we can allow we can give our children the tools necessary tools so that they can be prosperous and thrive like i said in adult life as well as children as children excuse me and the same goes with my seven-year-old my seven-year-old also has a business he is a chef he's been cooking he's taken my cooking class investments that i sent him out to do and he's allowed it to bring him money okay that was an investment that i gave him early in the summer as well you're going to get a hundred dollars and that's our investment amount who wants to take a hundred dollars and make an investment and create to get more money both of our kids you know at this this year our seven year old took that same investment flipped that money bought marketing material and even was able to land some um vending vending opportunities out at the farmer's market so my point is this establishing a a, a a standard for money early on helps the child later on yes there's plenty of jobs in domestic um, areas where we can cook and clean and all of those different things but why not tap into the areas that the child actually has strong interest in why not give the child just the tools to create the wealth and they go ahead and say this is how I'm this is what I'm going to use with those tools okay um, number five and this is my last one five fun ways to reiterate financial literacy it is totally a cool thing to teach your kids that having money is fun okay therefore um, make learning about having money also fun kids already know you know and have their own thoughts with, about parents with money you know I always tell my kids like when I'm going out and we're out somewhere and like say I decide while we're out I'm gonna go get a donut and I'm getting a donut for myself. I pull up to the drive-thru like at Dunkin' Donuts or at, you know, Starbucks or whatever. And I'm like, okay, let me grab this, 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 this. And my kids, of course, in the back will probably say, oh, I would like this or I would like that. And I always like to reiterate, it's very fun to have money because you get to make choices that other people can't necessarily make. And I'll tell them, and it's not to downplay the fact that they want something. What it is is to re-educate them on that one area of audacity and entitlement over my money, but also to reiterate the fact that you can do this too. You have this same choice. I have chosen to save. I have chosen to remember that when I'm out and about, every now and then, I like to eat things or go places um, with my money, okay? And that's what money gives you the privilege to do. So I always like to come back and let the kids know, yeah, having money is fun. And I like to for them to know that, but it doesn't, uh, if you don't have the money, you also don't, you're not entitled to someone else's money for your own special um, treats or special things. I'm your mother. Um, I have ice cream already at home. If you're desiring to have a second type, another type of ice cream, that is something you should buy with your money. You know, I'm not going to make you feel bad for not having money, but I will reiterate the fact that you do have the power to get that. Nothing's wrong with purchasing that ice cream for yourself. It's totally cool. Okay. And then I've also, I will also introduce games and I'm going to just show just a few games I've used. This game right here is called Lemonade Stand. Really fun game to start playing. Um, actually, I think it's, it should say five or four. Okay, it says ages six and up. I'll link this in the description box below. Okay, this is a wonderful game to teach your kid how to uh, start a business, learning about businesses um let me make sure i'm reading all of this right yeah this is a like a lemonade stand of course you're owning the most successful lemonade stand and, but your job is to maintain that you own the most successful lemonade stand so this one is fun that's one game another game we play and my kids my oldest loves this game 
This one is called Payday. And it is a game about making money and spending money. And what I, I love most about this game, bills are included. Um, and you have to play the full, you have to play the full board, which is a full 31 days. And there's a payday there. And if by the time you get to payday, um, you should, my, like some of my kids, what they do is they wait till payday and then they go back and pay all those bills because they can collect bills or you can pay, collect them and then pay them right then. Or you can wait till payday. But the the, dad, the bad part about payday, like all adults know, is that if you have waited to pay all the bills, there may be other expenses that happen in those 30 days that won't allow you to pay a specific bill on time, especially one that you really need to pay, like an electric bill. Okay, so this one is a really, really fun, fun game. Both of these were found at School Box. And then this really fun book is a journal and it's blank mine is blank because I make copies on our copy machine when our kids do it but it is called entrepreneur Academy this is new to our fun collection of entrepreneurship but this is from us born um, yeah this is a us born book but what I love most about this is teaches all things encompassing entrepreneurship not just starting your own business but the beautiful parts of um, you know having a better idea so uh, for instance like you know um what you know there could be an invention that's already done and then someone decides i'm still going to be an entrepreneur i'm going to make this i'm going to improve this invention you know that's also a part of an entrepreneur people people who design things that's also entrepreneurship so it teaches all things and what i also like about it is it also teaches management skills so if you i'm going to link this book also in the um, description box but it teaches you management skills it teaches you the marketplace basically about um, marketing and of course like I said making making a plan but they also teaches you about business skills things like um, competitive cost and stuff that is really good for children to know and like I said this is a children's book that is preparing people preparing kids to be um, striving and thriving in the adult world so that's that's that book but other than that y'all make financial literacy fun you know i always tell people you know don't rob your kids from things that you know are still just in your box of of what of, of what allowance can look like or what earning money can look like we have such a wonderful liberty of looking up things and finding out more information. We have the internet, we have libraries, we have all types of ways. Pinterest, thank you God for Pinterest. But, you know, expand your, your scope of how your kids can earn. And as I often, as I often say, talk to your kids. What are some things that they're thinking about? If your kid is saying, I would like to clean up the house or I would like to mow the lawn. There's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and go with that if that's what you want to do. But most kids would like to see other ways that they can do it. Then, And most kids also don't necessarily know all ways that they can earn money. So broadening your scope as a parent is beneficial also for them. All right. I think that is all I have to share. I told you it was going to be about five. You know, I'm trying to get back into this recording thing, but y'all, I appreciate you just sitting down, chilling with me. I wanted to do this in the kitchen because I already knew my dog was going to be all over the place. Thankfully, he's all the way over there. And then my boys, they just left with their dad to go get some milkshakes. So I figured this would be the best time to come in here and, and have some time with you just for us to talk about money. All right. Hope to see you soon. Like, for real, I seriously hope to see you soon, as in, I seriously hope to create more videos and post them. All right, bye.